All right, this is Russell Whitney with Expert Insider. I'm hit, sitting here with a great friend of mine, Eric Gantz, absolutely amazing at getting funding for your business. I know a lot of you out there are looking for money. You need more money for your marketing, maybe inventory, real estate investing. Eric with Seed Capital is who I highly recommend and solely work with. Eric, uh, it's great to have you on the show here Thanks, today. Man. Appreciate so, it. So, Eric, I want to talk to you just a little bit about how did you get started before into the funding business? Because I know a lot of people are going to want to know about that. How do you get anywhere from uh, what twenty five thousand up to one hundred fifty thousand unsecured lines of credit, zero percent interest? This is huge. A lot of you can qualify. A lot of you can get it. I'll get you a trial code. How you get it set up? Get a great discount on as well. But what I want to talk about is funding. Uh, so when we talked before and we've had dinners before, you said you were in the mortgage business. Mm -hmm. But before the mortgage business, um, you went to college? Yeah, yeah. Okay. What college did you go to? Went to San Diego State. Got okay. both my uh, undergraduate and master's there. Okay. And what? Uh, in entrepreneurial finance, actually. In, in finance? Yeah. Okay. So at least you're still doing uh, what you got yeah, your degree Yeah, I'm actually in, right? one of the people that So you're is, one of the very yeah, few. <laughs> use, using my degree for what I actually uh, do for, for my living, yeah. Right. Okay. So when you got into finance, um, you graduated college, what was your first, uh, what did you get into? Did you become an entrepreneur immediately or did you work for somebody? What happened? Yeah. So yeah, ever since I was a little kid, I've always had the entrepreneurial bug. Okay. Right? You know, I had lemonade stands, was, you know, making finger skateboards, like anything mm -hmm. I could do to try to Oh, you made those little yeah, flip little, skateboards? Yeah, yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. So I used to make them out of cardboard. I yeah. had a friend that would, was an artist and he did mm -hmm. the drawings and I would uh, rip all of the wheels out of my, my matchbox cars. Oh, <laughs> and those would okay. be the wheels. Yeah. Gotcha. So I had a nice little cottage industry there for a while, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it, I'm always, I've always been someone that kind of marched to my own beat and right. had, had a lot of trouble, um, working under bosses simply because I always felt that I was smarter than them or, <laughs> you know, wasn't, had a hard time executing something I didn't feel was like the, the right way to do something. Right. You know? So right. It wasn't that was in always your difficult DNA. for me. Yeah. That was, right. So that's difficult for me. Not to gotcha. say that I was like a rebel or, you know, you know, a jerk about it, but right. it's just, I always felt more comfortable. You didn't have the control though. Yeah. Would you yeah. say it's more of a control thing? No, it's not a control thing. It's just, I think that, um, being able to sit back and, and analyze something and to, to execute, something based on you know what you, what is best based on the, the data and the metrics and everything else okay is, as opposed to emotion gotcha so, so many people that i've worked with in the past have always been emotion okay i do things because this is how we've always done it this mm. is how my dad did it this is how my uh, my my boss before me did it gotcha and so those types of things those types of answers really frustrate me because right as you know they wouldn't innovate evolve. or they wouldn't exactly. think outside of the box yeah. and if okay. you don't innovate especially in this in this economy um, you know, you're, you're going to die on the vine. So, mm -hmm. for sure. So, you know, that was sort of the foundation and sort of my, the, the way my DNA was, was structured from, gotcha. from a young age. Was that because of your family, your father, your mother? How was that? No, it's kind of weird. My, both my parents were kind of working stiffs, very risk adverse. Okay. And so it's, it's really weird that I kind of was a big risk taker. Okay. Always wanted to do my own business, do my own thing. And, right. And, um, never wanted to, to go to school and then get a nine to five. That was that was never an option for me. Never wanted to get a nine to five. Never. Always wanted your own business. Always, yeah. Okay. And w did you like the the whole fact of was it money winning? What when you're a kid when you did a lemonade stand was it just being able to make money? Yeah, I think it's um, what's always fascinated me is that if you have a product or a service that someone's mm -hmm. willing to reach in their pocket and right. give you money for it. Okay. That's, that's always been sort of the high for me. Right. To, to have something that. That, that people other people want because mm -hmm. you've you've done so good with it or right. your product is so good your service is so good that people are willing to pull out their wallet and mm -hmm. give you money for it right and that's you know it sounds simple but as you know it's yep. a very very difficult thing to do for sure and, and I think it all revolves around sales uh, being able to pursue even even there's people out there that don't have a great product but they have great salesmen that know how to sell the product. But if you sure. have a great yeah. product and great sales, even better. Yeah. Um, so talking a little bit about that, you got in your entrepreneur spirit. What was your first business, your own business that you got into? I was looking around and seeing what would be a good industry to, to dip my toe right. into. And the real estate market was just absolutely on fire. Of course. And having a huge having a finance background decided that probably a good time to, to look into getting into the mortgage game because mm -hmm. I mean we had we had 
people that I knew, friends from California that moved out, they were tending bar one, one month, the next month, they're, they're making, making 30, 40, 40 yeah, thousand exactly. dollars, you know, doing mortgages. I had some friends like that too. Yeah. So I'm thinking, man, these, these are, well, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> That's because they were spending their money like it was right, never going to end, yeah, right? I get it. Yeah. But that market was booming. It so was you saw an booming. opportunity, yeah. said jump in. Even though the market's booming, listen, market's booming, you can still follow a trend, jump in. Just don't make dumb decisions and keep all your eggs in one basket. So going back to that. Yeah, so the, the, the calculus was, you know, if these, if these guys that were tending bar a month ago are now making $30,000, $40,000 a month doing mortgages, Why can't you? I actually have a financial background. I mm -hmm. think I could probably do it better. So, of course. So we uh, jumped in, jump in head first, and uh, opened a mortgage brokerage, mm -hmm. and um, did a lot of lead gen, and uh, started to really crank as far as you know doing mortgages. Started doing, gotcha. started doing a, a lot of volume. Right. And so the important thing, which I've found, is that each business that I've been involved with, I always take the things that I've learned and, and make sure that. I apply those to things ongoing. So gotcha. you're, you're developing this this massive knowledge base mm -hmm. to where every single every single experience or business that you start kind of becoming involved with, mm -hmm. you have a lot of things that you can bring to it. Yeah, a lot, a lot of a lot of good experience yeah, for and sure. things. So your chances of good becoming, experience and mistakes and too, mistakes as well. And that's actually the most important part right. to be honest. Is not making I learn more take, from my mistakes twice. than I do from yep. my successes. For sure, right. I think we all do because. The success is, says we're doing something right. Mistake is r wrong, alarm bell, so people uh, grab attention to that. So sometimes a lot of people don't know though, they're, they're ignoring their successes, which is highly important for their learning curve to get better and improve. Absolutely. So that was like yeah. what you were saying is innovating, getting new, not being, this is how we did it, this is how this person did it, we're gonna do it this way, otherwise, because that was success to them. So for them, they're at that success barometer, right? Absolutely. So that's yeah. why they can't stay stuck in that. Mm -hmm. You got you coming in where you're saying, there's a bigger picture here, but they don't want to hear it because there's success, right? Exactly. So that is a killer of them scaling more and making more. But Would you, you know, agree? And it's also part of your personality. And, right. and again, you know, how your DNA is put together. Right. Because some people, they're making 30, 40 grand a month and they're mm -hmm. happy. They're like, this is awesome. I yeah. never thought I'd make this kind of money. And right. they sort of rest on their laurels. Whereas mm -hmm. you and I, as you know, when, right. you're, when you're a consummate entrepreneur, you just always want to push the envelope higher yeah. and higher. You I'm wanna, not happy. <laughs> exactly. You want to you wanna just see how far your success can go and right. how far you can take it. And so that was kind of the approach I took to, you know, to, to doing mortgages. Mm -hmm. And that was one of those things where, you know, all... You know, high tide lifts all boats, right? Right. So it was it was definitely an industry driven mm -hmm. a part a part of it, a big part of it, an industry driven success because okay. it was difficult to to be in that industry and not be successful, even right. if you weren't that good at it, you're still right. making money. Right. So when it became difficult after the mortgage meltdown, mm -hmm. that was when, as as right. you had stated, a lot of people that were they bailed making, out. You know, making half a million dollars a year. We're, yep. we're broke after. Going back to tending bar, exactly. didn't invest their money, didn't put it into any type of assets, lost everything, and they're still depressed about it and still beating themselves up about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. But the, the great part is, and what we're going to get into next, is your maneuver into funding and why everybody needs it. This is Russell Whitney. You're watching Expert Insider. Be back in just a minute.